In this tutorial, I'll show you how to do a really good chroma key effect using BCC Chroma Key in Boris Red in Sony Vegas. Hey, here I am in Sony Vegas, and what I'm going to do is take this poorly lit shot and get a perfect key from it using BCC filters inside of Boris Red. So let's start. I'm going to apply Boris Red as a custom composite or 2 to 1 transform effect in Vegas. When I apply red this way, it gives me access to both clips in my Vegas timeline. So, what are we going to do? The shot is not well lit. It's very bright over here, very dark over here. It's wrinkly. It's a nightmare. Like, whoever shot this, this guy, whoever he is, probably makes videos for Boris FX, didn't do a very good job lighting this shot. And, of course, a real actress next to him who is clearly thrilled to be working with such a talented man. Okay, so we are going to fix everything by applying the BCC chroma key effect. Ready? Go. Okay, 80% if not more of the blue screen is gone from the default settings on just applying this filter. So that's a very good key to begin with. I'm going to make it even better by, first of all, selecting a blue that is definitely in my shot. Usually an unnecessary step, but let's be careful, shall we? Okay, so now we can see even smoother shadows there. So if I wanted to keep these shadows, that would be no problem. Um, but I don't. I want to get rid of all of them. So watch this. I'm going to bo boost the lightness to... If I go to the max, it's pretty much all gone. But I want to keep a little bit of playroom here. So let's say, like, 80. Okay. So I still have some rough spots here to patch up. I'll do that with other filters in just a minute. Okay, so going through, you can see it holds up really well. On top of the background, well, it doesn't blend well yet, but at least I can see that most of the background is coming in cleanly, except for right down here, some noise. So to get rid of that noise, we are going to use a matte choker. There we go. Good, good sample of it. So I'm going to use the BCC matte choker. Okay, well that got rid of it. Unfortunately, it also lost the definition I had in the hair and edges up here. So what we can do is isolate the choker effect to a certain area of the screen. I'm going to say just this bottom area, which is where the problem was. So if I go into view map mode, I can see it's still a really clean key, virtually perfect. Um, and now I'm just going to fine touch the smoothness. Okay, because what I don't want is for it to be too smooth. Um, that's usually a dead giveaway that something's been keyed in. So if I turn down the blur, that's one way to get my edges back. And if I turn down the choke, I'm going to turn it down a lot. Because it was such a clean key to begin with, we don't really need the choker to do a lot of cleaning up. Okay, and that's much better. Much better. Okay, good. So, let's move on. Next, I'm going to work on slightly softening some of the other edges. Um, you see it's kind of pixelated around my neck and hair, and same on her. So, there's a number of ways you can try to fix that. I'm going to do it with another effect called Matte Cleanup. Uh, this gives you controls over blending edges and another choker here, too. If I turn that down a bit. Okay, so you can see, if I wanted to, I can really, you know, go all out and choke the hell out of these guys. But that sounds violent and wrong, so let's just do a little bit of a choke here. And blend it up just a tiny bit. You know, I'm just going to enter in a value of 1 so that the edges are blended. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, so we're off to a great start here. Next, I'm going to apply some color correction. The foreground is much darker than the background, so we could fix that a number of ways. The three-way color grade is a new filter in BCC7 and RED5, and it lets me adjust the highlights mids and shadows all separately. So I can boost the exposure independently on each channel, which 
is what I want to do here. Specifically, I want the mids to be a lot brighter. I've got this nice fine tuning slider underneath the main slider for subtle effects. And bring down that just a bit too. Going to make it just almost overexposed as she is just, you know, barely not overexposed, so we should match. The shadows should also come up a bit. Okay, that looks good. So, there is something I maybe could have done earlier, which is to get rid of the walls that are still visible. Uh, veritable elephant in the room. So I'm going to use Red's pen tool and just kind of mask out that area. Now the nice thing about red is that it gives you a lot of different ways to create masks and isolate foregrounds and backgrounds. My actors don't move much so a static mask should be fine but if I need to move it I can. Oh see that right there? So if I just select the mask again it will automatically keyframe the change right there. Ah, oh, just barely made it. Look at that. Good. Okay, so now we can look at the whole picture and we can see that it is much better than it was before. There is a couple of the things I'm still going to do to make it even better. So the first one is I am going to add a light wrap effect that's going to help blend the background and foreground. So if I select a background here, video 2, and go back into it. What a light wrap does is it actually helps you bleed your background onto your foreground. So you can see I'm pulling the actual background video onto the foreground there. That's cool, but let's reset that. We don't want this to be in your face. We want it to be a subtle effect. You know, we want it to be felt and not seen in a sense. Okay, so we can probably make it less wide and that's really all we need to do. Go back out. So if I talk about on and off you can see the effect that it has. It's a really useful blending tool. Check out the difference it makes over here. So that's with it and that's without it. It's a very nice change. Alright, there's one more thing I want to do and it's kind of a little bit of overkill but you might need to do this on your shots. I'm going to apply a match grain effect. So match grain lets you take basically film stock and match it to any other footage that you have. So in this case, you can see an exaggerated effect here. But what I'm going to do is select the sample from the background, which I think has the most even amount of grain right here. Increase the sample size to get a better you know, picture of it and then go back. Okay, so you can see it's a very subtle effect, again felt not seen, um, but it, it really helps, especially on footage that's computer generated, uh, which wouldn't have noise at all on it. Okay, and I am done. So let's go back into Vegas now and see how it looks here. Okay, great. So all this from that. Okay, very big difference. And did I say I was done? Because it looks like I forgot one little detail, this little black spot right here. So we can get rid of that very similar way as we uh, isolated our actors. We're going to create a mask. This time I'm going to pre-compose everything we just did and just paint over that spot. Another cool thing about red is the paint system. And now watch this. I can take that paint that I just made, use that as a mask, and just invert it. There we go. Okay, now it's a real blind spot, and we have a wonderful key left over. So that's it. Now, if you liked what you saw here and want to try it out for yourself, you can download a free, fully functioning trial version at our website, and that's at BorisFX.com.